When it comes to the broader economy, it's sort of, yes, slowing, but broadly resilient. What did you make of the numbers? Well, in a, in a sense, Heidi, no real surprises here. You know, reasonably uh, kind of solid number, not really missing expectations by too much in terms of the overall full year result. And a decent increase in, in the dividend. The, the question really becomes from here as to whether that needs to slow a bit into, into next year, which is some of the concern that the folks over at Bloomberg Intelligence are, are saying this morning. But more broadly, really, uh, this is a story about um, how the kind of the compression in the interest margins that we're seeing across the sector kind of plays out into next year. Just listening to Ross McEwen on the, on the call um, a few moments ago, he's very clear that his expectations are that rates have pretty much peaked at or near the top here in Australia. And the question, if you have a fairly benign environment going into next year in terms of the economy and rates, is how can the bank benefit from that? And his answer to that is, of course, continuing to plow investment into its business bank, which is continuing to do pretty well uh, with these conditions. And maybe some more certainty around the rate outlook, just helping at the margin that confidence, uh, both from a business perspective, but also for individuals. Now, of course, uh, pretty much kind of taking the finger off the pulse a little bit with, with home lending in, in recent quarters, a very deliberate move to prioritise and continue to prioritise business banking over its home lending um, bank. Do we get anything on cost cutting? Yeah, nothing huge, but of course it's a continuation of, of the strategy. I think there was kind of a little nod to the fact that uh, productivity gains are continuing to, to, to be made, but um, it does get harder as you get further and further through the cycle, of course. Um, on the headcount side, they've, they've made a number of, of costs, but, but overall not, not a huge change relative to their, to their peers. So um, next year will be key. If you do get that stable economic environment, you don't get a huge change in, in the rate outlook, um, that could provide a pretty supportive environment. But of course, that point around, around margins still holds. You, you don't have a situation where, um, you know, that, that really that tailwind that's been so supportive of, of earnings now for, for a number of quarters is, is well and truly past its peak and it just gets harder from here. So wouldn't expect that, that repeat in, in what we've seen with that dividend hike uh, looking into next year. Yeah, I was just about to talk about potential, you know, further pressure on dividends, right? But is this sort of the broader outlook when it comes to most of the big lenders from the numbers that we have seen so far? Yeah, I think I think so. But of course, you know, Westpac have a slightly different um, business. That's what we saw on, on Monday and what they were talking about with they were in some ways talking about kind of more pressure that they're seeing in in, in the home loan market and, and kind of slightly more concerned around the outlook there. That I think there's still a fairly um, there's a there's a kind of a measured approach there to how you see that competition developing into into next year. Most of the banks have already passed on the RBA's rate hike from earlier this year, but certainly the feeling is that that competitive pressure in, in mortgages kind of persists and, and endures into, into next year. Of course, next week we get to hear from CBA on Tuesday, and all eyes there will be on just how far they're prepared to go in terms of seeding market share in their key market. Of course, that's really been the story of the Australian home lending market with CBA kind of taking that step back a little bit, doing a lot less of the discounting. And the question is, how far can that go? Do they need to change tack heading into next year?